and just say, I want some of that presence to be more in my life. Can we gather here? More, more of that glory. You see, because then it's not about my church. It's not about my ministry. Hear me. It's not even about my family. It's not about someone else's family. It's not about so-and-so's son or so-and-so's daughter. It's not about my daughter. It's not about my job anymore. Come on. This presence thing unleashes and gives you victory. In air. You can now go to that job where you got to work for Beelz above himself. Come on. Because it's not about the job. It's about the presence of God giving you peace right where you're at. Instead of complaining about it, God pushes you through it and says, let my presence go with you. Jesus didn't promise the disciples a road paved. He promised them tribulation. But to be of good cheer because He's overcome it. And by His presence. Father, right now, so many up here, God. You know what? For the first time, the church is emptied out at the altar. (laughs) Come on. Corporate. Corporate presence. God, your glory and your presence. How do I get his presence? How many of you are asking yourself that? How do I get there? How did Zacchaeus get there? He looked at his shortcomings. Literally, come on, that was a joke. He he looked at where he fell short. And he did something about it. He elevated himself where he was weak. He put himself in a position that he couldn't see in the natural. Right now, it's all you have to do to get to his presence. Is figure out, God, I'm weak here. I'm vulnerable here. I miss it here. But God, I want to get to where you're at. See, here's the thing. The church tries to bring Jesus to where they're at. Come on. Oh, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, come into my situation. Jesus, come into my drama. Come into my situation. Come into my dilemma. Come into my crisis. Come into this. Come into that. And what Jesus is saying is, come with me. You come to me. Father, in Jesus' name, each one in here, let your presence be right before them. And may they do Surrender, submit to whatever it is. May they overcome whatever it is in their life. May they put it down. May they declare today that I'm going to start today and I'm giving this up. I'm stopping that. I'm going to quit thinking this and I'm going to quit speaking that. Because God, I've got to get to your presence. Your glory, God. And God, I fully accept the responsibility and the accountability of that. Your favor. Hallelujah. Come on. I fully accept your favor into my life. And I will steward that favor. Oh, glory. I will steward that favor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, listen. favor, God. Your glory, God. Your 24-7 presence, God. Your bread of life, God. Changing, transforming, God. Bring your glory, God. Bring your glory, God. He says, I am bringing it. He says, I am releasing it. He says, Lance, you will begin to smell my presence. You'll begin to smell my glory. 
as that new loaf of bread was placed on the table, a presence. It, um, it emitted an aroma that filled that room. God says, your life is an aroma that fills my presence in heaven. He says, I am so pleased. I am so in love with you. Let me continue to move in your life. The direction you have stepped into, God says, is the right direction. It is the correct path. I have seen you choose multiple paths, all in searching for what you are about to find. God says, I am going to reveal what you have been hunting for. Like a game of hang seek you are about to find what has been hidden. He will never be the same. He will never ever be the same. I'm going to unload on you, my son. I'm going to pour out from heaven more than you can contain. And I issue this word of caution. Do not try to contain it. Let it hit you. Let it fall on you. And let it roll off of you. For there are others who will soak it up as they come around you. It is not meant to fill you, but meant to empty you into the lives of others. Glory, Holy Spirit, all that He can handle. Holy Spirit, all that He can handle. All that He can handle, God. For the love of shuffle, what goes sitting in the monkey. God says, I'm going to put some titanium in your legs. He says, I'm going to beef you up. He says, I'm going to reinforce you because where you're about to stand, people are going to try to beat you down. He says, where you are about to go, people are going to try to push you to the left and push you to the right. People are going to try to convince you that what you're doing is wrong and they're literally going to try to be tugging and pulling. And they're going to do it because they think they're doing it right, but they're going to try to pull you off. And God says, I'm about to strengthen you so strongly that the only thing that will move you will be my presence. The only thing that will cause you to turn to the left or the right will be my face in your face. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I watched Chris come down after school. I don't think you think that he looks at you the same way that he looks at you. I don't believe that you believe that he holds you as highly as he holds you. And that, Danny, is because of the humility that possesses you. The humbleness and the meekness that you just carry. But when he came here, night after night, after getting out of school to help you, he was helping you. He was being a part of the work that you were doing. He wasn't just coming to help his church. He wasn't just coming for something to do. He was coming because his dad was here. He honors you. He respects you. He cherishes you. You're his dad. He looks up to you. And the moment that you think he doesn't, the moment you think that you can't speak into his life, because you see, sometimes you're afraid to speak into his life. You're afraid to even speak correction. You're afraid to speak direction. But his respect and love that he has for you, he will eat it up. He might act like a teenager and resist it at first, but there is authority that you have as his dad that he wants to submit to. Chris, this dad, you're the son he's been wanting to raise his whole life. You're the son he's been wanting to pour all the good in. 
for he has regrets with all of his other sons. He, he sees the mistakes of a life that he used to live, but you are the opportunity for him to have redemption in raising up a young man of God. The value that he puts on you, the spiritual value that he had, the pride that he has in you, goes beyond anything you'll ever understand until you have your first son. And you begin to pour what you have been given by God into Him. This bond, this relationship is never going to be severed. You don't have to worry about this young man going the ways of the world. He doesn't even know the ways of the world. The ways of the world have come after him to try to lure him in like park or try to trap him. But he just goes his own path. He just continues to do his own thing because God has set him apart. There's no worries here. You praying for Him, Him submitting to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that these two will walk as Jonathan and David.